Well, hey y'all. Look at this. Just look. Hold on. I got to show you. I always do this. But look how pretty y'all. For all the good that Chick-fil-A does for people, all the money they spend for orphanages and good causes. I should say the Chick-fil-A Foundation, to be clear. Um, I know, there may be like some legal reason I can't say that. Look at this. They still just make this such a beautiful place. They make coming to work such a beautiful place. And I never take that for granted because, you know, I've worked straight off a parking lot before over there. And um, just on this main campus, uh, and even that was pretty, but um, on this main campus, I just, um, it is just, listen. How peaceful. There's the deer. Remember, here's the other deer. And then here is the last deer. There's my antlers. <laughs> Look, I'm wearing a dress today. Not a dress, but like a skirt thingy and a long shirt. I don't know. I was just in the mood. Um, anyway, for all the good they do for people, they also do such good things for nature. Make the world a prettier place. Make it a beautiful place to come and visit. And you can go online to Chick-fil-A.com and book a tour. I'll be honest, I don't know how to do it, but just go out there if you want to. <laughs> Um, but anyway, there's lots of ants is why I'm looking down, y'all. I mean, like big ants. And I'm on it, have a very long skirt on. Um, our dress code switched from, like, professional hose and heels to business casual. And so a lot of times people have actually come in in a maxi dress. I am not normally comfortable with that. But today, you guys, I had no clean pants. When I get home, I have got to do laundry. So, how are y'all doing? I hope you're doing well. I want to say something. I made a um, a video where I talked about the difference between um, salvation by works and faith. And a gentleman, it was a Hispanic name, I don't remember, it was long, um, made a comment. He didn't make a comment. He, he did a lengthy dissertation. Actually, what it looked like was that he copied and pasted from a website, to be honest with you. Which I get that, that if you feel like a website has a better answer on a subject, I use CARM, C-A-R-M dot org. Stands for Christian. No, sorry. Christian. In research ministries. No. Christian Apologetics Research Ministries. This is apologetics. Do you know what apologetics is? It's the defense of the faith. Now, God himself does not need a defense, but sometimes we need to defend our faith. And or and when I say the word defend, what I actually mean is explain some things about what we believe. Now, you don't have to, I think, and if you're a Christian, then your heart has been changed to do the things of God rather than the things of man. And you won't do it perfectly, and that's why it isn't our works that saves us. It's so important that you know that. Should we do them? Yes. If your heart has been changed, God will put a work that he created in advance for you to do for his glory. It's for him to get the credit. It's not for you to get the credit. And um, so you do, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 is very, very clear that our salvation is a free gift from God. And it's, and it's by the very grace of God that he would provide it but it's through faith it's through the faith in him the decision for you to trust him enough to put aside your will and do his will and even the faith to do that is a free gift he says it's a gift from God you can't even do the faith you fail there'll be times you won't have enough faith why he has to give it to you and then he says that he gives us works to do what works these great works we come up with that are better than anything God could come up with to save us no what Jesus did on the cross is what he came up with to save us and that's all that is needed plus nothing else to save us now he did create works in advance for us to do for his glory and for the helping of others. So that is why we do works. It is a visual outward manifestation of the changed heart within to glorify God, to cause other people to see his presence within us. It's nothing good we can do. There's nothing good about us. Jesus said only God is good. And this is when he 
was um, actually claiming to be God because he is good and he was in fact doing good works. Not just good works like you and me. They were the works he prepares. And he even says that even though he is the very nature of God, John 8 24 is very clear that if you don't get who he is, you you are left in your sins. There's nothing to save you from your sins. So it's important that you get that Jesus is God. That's why I did that um, series, Jesus is God. So you can look that up in my mind. But um, And then John 8, 58, he's very clear that he is God, that his name is I Am, which refers to Exodus three fourteen, where God names himself. There's other places in Isaiah and in Matthew where um, he says that he is the wonderful God, um, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is the names of Jesus. When Jesus gets the name Emmanuel, it means God with us. There's so many places where Jesus claims to be God. The very nature of God. Meaning, we have the nature of man in us. He is the nature of man, but he also has the nature of God. And no one else does. He's still God, y'all. No, you can't ever get that confused. He's God. Now, he also, in being God and being man, has... Um, a posture, if you will, of looking to the Father in all things. This is what we are supposed to copy Him. We're, but can we do it? No! We cannot do it without God the Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit that Christ left behind when He went to the Father. He says, but I'm not leaving you an orphan. I'm sending another. And it's the Holy Spirit. He can live in you. And you can do more than even I do. Why? Because He was one human being while He was here. If the Holy Spirit of God lives within us, all the human beings that that God lives within, he can do even more than Jesus himself did while he was here. Now, that's a whole nother talk. But my point is, please don't discard the fact that we should do good. But don't ever think that you'll ever be able to do good enough. That you'll have enough good works that will add up to salvation or help your salvation. The source of your salvation is the bloody death, the suffering horrible, terrible, awesome death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And if you place your faith in him, if you make the decision by an act of your own free will, which God gave you this free will, and why I fight for freedom, this is what the freedom God gave us, um, that in this free will, we make the decision for God, God, God. We want to do God in everything that we do. Well, we Once you make that decision that you're going to follow him, your acts should follow. But because you're still human, because your salvation in an essence of, of your humanness is still being worked out, you have already been saved by the cross. When you choose him to be your God, you have been saved from the wrath of God, which is what we deserve, death. Jesus paid that price. He got that wrath, that cup of, they said he, he didn't want to drink. He, in his humanness, he knew how hard that was going to be. But even in that, he said, but not my will, your will, Father. And this is, again, him teaching us. It doesn't make him any less God because he's just still God. But his posture is to serve the Father. The Father calls Jesus God. So don't get confused and think, well, see, then Jesus must be left. No, look in Hebrews chapter 1 where God himself, the Father, calls Jesus God. He says, but your throne, O God. And that's God the Father talking to God the Son. Y'all don't ever get confused about that. Don't let people twist things around. Here's the thing. Don't even trust me. Go look it up for yourself. Get you a good, if you need a Bible, you let me know. Um, get you a good Bible with a concordance in the back where you can go look up subjects and then go like salvation. And then go look up every sub, every single scripture you can. And it's like, bet that's 50 scriptures. It's more than that. But go look them up and then you pray to the Holy Spirit to interpret that to your heart in the place that you're at right now in your walk and let him teach you what he wants you to know and only what he wants you to know for where you are right now and let that be how you learn. Now, if you can learn from me, great. But what if I got it wrong? I've searched it out, but so have others. You have to search this out. And then it's like, well, then everybody could ter interpret differently. If you ask the Holy Spirit to interpret the word of God for you. He is one spirit. His goal is to answer that prayer and have you correctly interpret. And if you do that, don't you worry about it. If you get it wrong, 
Say, Lord, if I got anything wrong in this, teach me, O oh Lord, by your presence, by your holy word, by circumstances, by prayer. You teach me what the truth is, and he will give you the truth. He says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, you have not because you ask not or because you ask with the wrong motive. If your motive is to know God better and to know his word and to please him and obey him, trust me, he is going to make sure that that motive is fulfilled. I got excited. All right. Love y'all. I'll be uh, doing some meaningless makeup videos soon for fun. These are in, these are the important things. Talking about this is a lot more important. Don't get too into the things of the world. They're fun, but they're not, they're not important. And make sure you only do those things after you've done the things God asked you to do with your money that is right. And if you've done something wrong with your money, be contrite and, and humble and ask God to forgive you. And then don't do that again uh, and move on. Because we're all going to fail. He knew that. That's why he was willing to go to the cross. He wouldn't have done it if it wasn't what was needed to save you. That's what saved you. Now we want to walk in it. We want to live in it. But we're going to fail. He made us of dust. He knows we're frail and we're dependent and weak. That's how he made us on purpose. So we would need him and only him. We must rely on him. Adhere to his word. That is what faith is. To trust. To rely upon. To adhere to. Oh my gosh, it sounds like an amplified Bible. I love y'all. Bye!